Let's get right into this video. It's a super fast, easy concept, so let's do it. So this is my mom's previous set. It was just a purple cat eye. It was cute, simple. Um, so I'm using the speedy bit to remove the art, the design. There's nothing crazy here. It's just gel polish and top coat. But I really love this bit. It's aggressive. I like to use this bit at a very high speed. I recommend you use aggressive bits at a high speed regardless, but I prefer to use this at at least 25,000 RPMs, okay? And if you have a good high quality drill like the Zippy from LE, you make sure you have all that good power behind it. Some, some e-files go fast, but they don't have a not enough power when they go fast to kind of eat through the product. So. Not only do you need a good bit, a really good e-file is important. So you can see I'm using this a bit and just taking off that product and I'll use it any direction, honestly. And this is sped up, but you can see just with one swipe as I go across the nail, how fast it takes this gel polish off. So this can greatly reduce the amount of time you have um, when you're doing your refills and rebalances to kind of, you know, debulk the nail, take off product and everything. So now I'm going to go in with the cutie patootie bit and I absolutely love this bit. I recommend. It's great for prep. I do use the itty bitty bit. Um, I don't have a clip of it. I'm sorry. It's also a diamond prep bit. I use this at about six to eight thousand rpms if somebody has more coarse cuticle they have tougher skin then i'll kind of turn it up to eight maybe even nine thousand rpms so i'm right-handed so we're using this in forward we're going from left to right be mindful with your diamond bits uh, specifically i don't use this one as much but you can use it in reverse as well even as a right-handed person you can put it in reverse and use this bit from left to right but again i prefer to use that with some of the smaller prep bits. So I didn't show it, I used the LE Pro Cleanser and I'm going in with tack. Now there's more prep, like I said, done off camera. My apologies. So I use the LE Pro Cleanser to dehydrate the nail. It's absolutely fantastic. And then tack, of course, is just, it's just fantastic. It's a fantastic, um, you know, adhesion product. It's a great primer. So I recommend it for, I even use it with other systems, don't tell. Anyways, so I am gonna do our fill today with Jimmy Gel, just because she didn't really have any integrity issues with the rest of her nail. We didn't need to do any rebalancing. This is three weeks out. I like to apply product very, very, very close to the live skin without touching. That way when the client has the growth, we don't experience as much growth far down the nail. That way the nails aren't as top heavy and less prone to lifting. So just keep that in mind. I'd rather you apply the product further away from the live skin than too close and on the live skin. However, let's try to find a happy medium to get as close as possible without touching. And that's gonna be ideal for great wear, longevity, um, so again, that the client doesn't have these nails that are like one week grown out and they, you know, are already halfway down the nail bed. I'm being hyperbolic, of course. So you can see I'm using Jimmy Gel and it makes for a quick feel. I love the brush, the kind of curved type shape. So I apply that slip layer and I take a little more product on the brush and I apply majority of that product towards the cuticle area and fade it down the nail. So the more product you want to be left with gel, the lighter touch you're gonna have. If you want to have less product as you're brushing it down, apply more pressure because the product will essentially squeeze out because you're applying more pressure. Um, so next, I went in and shaped off camera. I use the LE Perfect Files. I hardly ever show shaping on the camera if you're new here, my apologies. Um, but you know, you can always email me if you wanna have a class and learn about that. Um, so I'm using the shaper bit and I love this bit. It's one of like, if I'm on an island, a good cross cut style diamond bit is, you know, it's not all I need, but if, you know, if, if that was the case, we could get it done. We could do prep, we could do shaping, 
We could take three hours to debulk. You can do a lot with a diamond bit. <laughs> it's really, really versatile. I use this not only to smooth out the nail, but also to leave a buff surface. So these are the, I just wanna show you, we were pondering ideas for this set. We didn't know where to go. We're gonna do like the double French ombre. We wanted it to be summer tones. That didn't look right or cute with the colors. Now we're deciding angles. Like we're gonna go with this one. You wanna do them like a B, you wanna do it this way, you wanna do it that way. And she, <laughs> oh, this is, I just left this in to show you guys. We even think about the little stuff, like which angle do you want this? Do you want them all the same way? Do you want each nail different? How do you want to do it? <laughs> so I just use a little cheap cuticle brush and the LE Pro Cleanser just to remove dust, to make sure the nails are clean from any oils, especially once we're, you know, talking and planning and everything like that. So I'm gonna go in with my first color and the Selena Ryden Stripey Brush. And I absolutely love this brush. It's always on hand for any type of art things I'm doing for the most part. Now this is very simple and a great impact as far as you know the art that's happening here and as you can see we're going to just take the product and be imperfect with it honestly so we're keeping these lines at a diagonal and you can use this concept to create a lot of different things to create like texture and um there's a certain textile of clothing. I'm, I can't even think of it right now. But you can use this technique to, for a variety of things, but it's great for abstract art like this. So you can see I'm taking the product on the brush and this is the neon yellow paint. It has a little thicker of a texture, which I, I really like and appreciate, honestly. So you can see we're kind of dry brushing this in a way. So I'm taking a little bit of product on the brush and then I'm just going at this angle and you can see it's kind of imperfect and I'm just brushing it through. And this is sped up of course, but I can assure you there's no, you know, finer technique or detail than what's going on. It is really simple. Now, I think past the actual technique here with the brush, um, the color choice, I think is really the most important factor. Cause like I said, this is pretty easy. You see what's happening. I'm just taking the brush, a little product on there, and I'm just swiping it across. And I'm filling, I'm placing it randomly. I'm filling in areas you know, that need that color. I'm trying to see, you know, we got the yellow here, the blue here, where can the pink go? And then also keeping in mind the amount of colors that we have. So like I said, a big part of this is the actual color selection itself. We went in with colors that would pop, you know, and it doesn't necessarily, this is more of a summer, spring, this is feeling like spring to me. Maybe it's just me. Um, but, you know, we're keeping it, keeping that into consideration, although this is those summer nights. So that color just played me. <laughs> it's feeling spring to me. So <laughs> we're going to go in with this. Um, like I said, I didn't like that. And we're going to add these colors in different spaces and make sure we don't have too much of one color. But the actual colors are very important. So you see the how the peach stands out it's very different than you know that teal it contrasts with that teal and um you know so on and so forth so we want to create um cool tones add some cool tones some warm tones and really our only cool tone in this is going to be that teal type color the rest are more warmer tones but you can see how that teal pops and that yellow is very bright. That yellow is a great contrasting color with that teal as well. It's not a complete exact contrast, but they, you know, they pop next to each other um, along with that pink. So again, that one cool tone with these warm tones. Now, I think personally, the colors that do the most here in a way are going to be the black and the white that we add. The white kind of brightens it up a little bit. You know, these colors are literally bright. They're not dull. It's not a dark purple, vampire-y type colors. But that white just kind of livens it up more. And to me, kind of makes my case that these are more springy. That white kind of does it 
it kind of tames down those bright colors in a way but white itself is also bright but it has no you know interference i'm going on because like i said i really feel the colors are the biggest thing um in this set that really make it as opposed to the art technique because again i'm just filling in areas you don't want anything too perfect so you see i'm kind of dragging these lines out with a light touch so i go in with a harder touch just kind of get more concentration of color but you can see i kind of pull and fade it out so we get these nice kind of drag marks so i'm filling in i'm, not, I'm trying not to cover you know colors too much not layer them too much so i think the black is what makes this really really pop so look at that finger to the left before the black it's like okay it's cute that's fine that would have been a cute set by itself but once you throw that black in there it makes it it makes it sharp you know what i mean like it makes it nice it stands out because you know black is in a color <laughs> so it contrasts with everything on there <laughs> especially the white but everything on there so when it, it was just our teal with the other two or three colors that popped and now to the teal everybody has to bow down to the black <laughs> because it just really really pops and so you can use this concept it doesn't have to be the same colors or anything at all but i think it's fairly easy but you know just be mindful of the colors that you're using this could be a monochromatic idea too i think it would be really cute so you know that just throws away my whole you know argument here just like different shades of pink or purples or blues just all you know different shades but anyways i digress so i'm going and kind of cleaning up the shape with the perfect file i'm using the 180 side just real quick this is a short clip just to show you guys just to retain our shape make sure they're sharp i topped these with flat matte i didn't get it on camera my apologies but this is our final look you guys this is so easy so cute like i said it's really the colors that do a lot of the heavy lifting here the design itself is fairly simple you guys Please check out Light Elegance. This video is sponsored by Light Elegance. I always thank them. I appreciate them as a brand and their quality of products and the chemistry that goes with it. So definitely check them out. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and put a little spring flower emoji because I'm convinced these are spring nails. All right, you guys. Bye.